well, it was a dry run. A dry run is not something that you hope for, obviously, when they call you and tell you to come to the hospital, um, but it's a very real possibility. It happens to a lot of people, um, and multiple dry runs are actually not uncommon. So there's just so many factors and so many variables that have to come together. It's disappointing, um, of course. If it wasn't disappointing, that would just be weird. Um, so that's normal to feel that way. But we also weren't, like, upset or disheartened. No tears were shed. And that's because, honestly, God has better lungs out there for me. The ones that were flown in from Montana this morning um, they were still viable, meaning they can use them in the surgery. Um, sometimes they run the risk of uh, in ship, like getting shipped or in transportation. Something happens and they just they don't preserve well and they can't use them at all. But in this case, they were viable, but they just weren't quite as healthy looking as um, the surgeon was hoping. Okay, so we're on our way home and Despite the dry run, I can think of five optimistic things. For one being, there's better lungs out there for me, and that in itself is very encouraging. Second thing being, we just got discounted parking. <laughs> that was worth it right there. Third thing, I got my toes painted. Thank you, Mom. Fourth thing is that I didn't ha wake up from anesthesia for the dry run. There's a lot of people that actually end up going through pre-op, getting to the OR, and being put under before they realize that the, the organs aren't viable. And I can't imagine, I mean, as hard as it was waiting all night long, not being able to sleep because you're so excited, um, I can't imagine how much worse it would have been if I'd actually been sedated and woke up, that would have just been, I feel like that would have just hit harder. And the fifth thing I'm happy for, is I get to see Levi. I haven't seen him in about, what is it, been nine days? And I miss him like crazy. So I'm gonna go love on him. I just took a pretty long nap. I think it was about like four and a half hours because um, we were up literally all night with anticipation um, and so that just was really refreshing and I just needed that. So <clears throat> slept and now I'm feeling refreshed, I'm feeling energized and um, I just want to talk a little bit more about this process and how it's crazy because it's such an emotional roller coaster. Getting the call was absolutely insane. Just everything that, that you want to hear so badly, so badly, that you, you just replay in your head um, and you just, you want more than anything else you've ever wanted. I mean, this, this change in my quality of life, and essentially not just a change, but a brand new quality of life that is something I've never been able to experience, is more than I've wanted anything. So this whole process, I mean, you have your workup, you have your evaluation, um, the board, the committee, uh, transplant committee presents your patient file, you get approved, you get listed. Um, and from the time you get listed, you just wait by your phone 24-7. Um, and you just wait for the call and you just, you, I mean, I've had dreams where I got the call because that's how bad I wanted it. And you just think, you know, where am I going to be? What are they going to say? Like, who's going to be with me? What time is going to be? And um, to get that call was just overwhelming, does not even be able to describe it. I have never had an emotional reaction like I did with, with the call. The fact that like, I had just, no, I had wanted nothing more than to hear, you know, those words, we have a potential donor, you know, and just hearing that, 
it just, I, I completely broke down. And it was, I just, I was so, it's powerful, it's powerful. Um, <laughs> so much joy and um, obviously heartbreak because, you know, that means that someone lost their life and you could be receiving their, their loss as your gift. <sighs> you guys are a pivotal part of this journey. I am beyond humbled when I read through what all of you guys are saying about the way that I am handling this and the way that I'm being positive and, and that it's inspiring and that is so incredibly humbling. And I believe we, we reached like 250 followers on Fearless recently and like that just blows me away. I am so, so grateful. So thank you so much. For me, the key to just keep my head level and you know, it's okay, is just not being expectant. With this process, it's like there are so many things that have to work in your favor for this, for this transplant to all work out that it's almost more uncommon for it to actually work than it is for there to be an issue. And you don't want an issue because you want really, really healthy lungs. You want them to last you. I have no right to expect new lungs. There are tons of people who were listed for transplant or you know something happened. They either got really critical and passed away on the waiting list or um, you know they grew a certain mycobacteriums and they are no longer a candidate for transplant because of what's called spillage and reinfection. I don't deserve anyone's lungs. And that's just a fact, damn it. In the hospital earlier, I kind of had to end that because we got discharged. But um, I was talking about how those weren't the right lungs for me. And the reason why those weren't the right lungs for me um, it was a match, obviously, like blood typing, um, chest cavity size, like all that stuff. But because I'm so young and otherwise very healthy, the thoracic surgeon who does these transplants and gets to know these patients, um, and not just numbers on a medical chart, but, you know, what are your plans? What are your goals? What are your dreams post-transplant? What are you going to do? to appreciate these lungs. Um, he really wants the very best lungs for me. I'm not doing this transplant and this incredibly painful, rigorous, you know, recovery and process. I'm not going through with this so that I can get like five years off these lungs. I'm going through with this so that I have insanely healthy, strong, beautiful lungs that will last me hopefully a very long time. And he's not just going to stick any, any lungs in me because they're the right size. That's not how they do it. This is, this is serious. You know, these are people's organs and they don't just give them to anybody. You know, he went down there right before I was supposed to get pulled to the OR prep. And he looked at them and they just weren't up to par with what he wanted from me. Um, and that's okay because he is awesome. I completely trust him and he has been doing this for such a long time. He is incredible. He is an extremely reputable surgeon. Everybody in the transplant support group is like, this guy is insane. So the good news in all of this is that somebody else got the lungs I was supposed to have because they were significantly older than me. And um, you know, I'm, I'm honestly really happy for them because I I hope and believe that, you know, those lungs will give that person, you know, what they need. But for me, like, I'm waiting for lungs that are the right fit and that will last me a long time. So again, thank you for your guys' support, for the love, for the prayers, for just being along the ride in this journey because it is watching guys.